Displaying errors on our form can be as easy as just passing the errors that we get from here through to a view. But what we're actually doing here is we are redirecting. So what I want to do is set up some middleware that will hold all of the errors that occurred and then we can pass them through as a global to our view. Now again, that might sound confusing and the initial setup for our middleware might be something new, but don't worry, as long as we get this right, it will save us a lot of time in the future. All we'll have to do is this and then we can forget about doing anything else. So we want to start to set up middleware. So we'll close these off and just tackle that first of all. So of course, again, we're gonna structure this inside of our app folder. So we're gonna create a middleware directory. Now the middleware that we're going to be using is going to use our container. If you're not sure what middleware is, it's essentially just each layer going through to the point where your application boots up. So think of it as someone comes in at the very outer shell we cycle through each middleware layer. We check things, we do things, we set things up, we do whatever we need to do. Then we get to the core of our application. Now, the reason that we're using middleware for our errors is because we need to send them through to all views and it makes sense to place this into middleware. So even if this is slightly confusing at first, we will see how it all comes together in the end. So let's just set up our base middleware. All this will allow us to do is create subclasses under this, which will allow us to have access to our container, much like we did with our base controller. So this then is just called middleware. So we want to namespace this under app middleware. And of course, this is just middleware, our base middleware. So here we're gonna have our container and we're going to have our constructor this is going to take in our container and it's going to just set it. That is all we need to do for our base middleware. Simple as that. Now what we can do is any new middleware we create, we can extend this base middleware. And when we actually attach middleware, we'll have this available because we'll pass our container through to it. So let's set up our validation errors middleware. Really straightforward just validation errors middleware. Of course, there are loads of ways you can structure this, but I'll just be pretty explicit here. So let's just grab the namespace from over here, paste that in. And of course, this class is called validation errors middleware. And of course, it extends our base middleware. So now what we need to do in here for all slim middleware, we have an invoke magic method so into here we have our request passed we have our response passed and we have the next callable middleware now it's important that we call the next middleware because it needs to cycle through from the outside of our application much like an onion into the core so let's just do a var dump and just say middleware just so we can see that this works when we attach it to slim so to actually get this middleware into slim we need to add it on our bootstrap part of our application. So just at the bottom here, we'll do just fine. So here we say app add, and then we choose the middleware we want to add. Now in this case, it's app middleware and it's validation errors middleware. Now remember, because we're extending our base middleware, we need to pass our container in. And that is pretty much it. So now if we actually refresh this page, we see the string middleware just up there. So we've got an error here because the middleware must return instance of response interface. All this means is that we need to return down here the next callable middleware. So all we do is we say response and this is next to the next middleware. We pass the current state of the request, the current response, and we return that response. We just do this as standard in all middleware. So this is before the state is changed and this is after the state is changed. So when I refresh, it works as normal, but we see this called at some point in our application. So of course we don't want to var dump here. What we want to do is attach our errors that we got from our validation. So if we open up our validator, we want to attach all of these errors to 
all of our views or we want to add them as globals. So how do we do this? Well, a really simple way to do this would be when you do validate, we set them into a session here and then inside of our middleware, we take that session and we set it into our views. So all we're doing is just persisting that data. So for our errors here, we're just going to say session errors. And of course, you can call this whatever you want. Errors may be a bit vague. And we just say this errors. Simple as that. So now that we've done this over here, we want to take them errors and then place them into our views. So to do this, we know that we have access to our container within here. So we just say this container view. We use the get environment method. Let's just fix this up. And then we say add global. So this will just take two parameters. The first is the name. So this, in this case, we'll just call it errors. And the second is the actual value. So in this case, it's session errors. So remember, we are taking the errors caused by the last set of validation, setting it into our session. And then within here, we're attaching it to all of our views, or at least the view that we're rendering. Now, this is really important. We want to unset this afterwards because we no longer need it. We don't need to keep this in the session. So we get rid of it. And then by the time we have got down to the core of our application, this will still be available because it will be available as a global inside of our views. So let's just test this out and see how this looks on our sign up page. So somewhere around here, doesn't really matter where, we can just output this like so. So we can say errors and then we can say JSON encode like so. So this will just dump it out for us so we can see what we're working with. So now we can see null. When I submit it, you can see we now have an object of all of our errors. Perfect. So we haven't needed to touch our authentication controller as, uh, at all. We haven't had to go through and send st stuff to a view and do all that stuff. And this just saves us so much time. This is all now set up for you to just output errors. You don't need to do anything else. You just need to validate and redirect the user back if validation failed. So now we can actually use this errors variable that's within our view to actually output the errors. Simple as that. So to actually do this, then we, of course, need to check each of these and see if they have errored. Now, on our form group class just here, we have the option to pass an ha a has error. Again, this is just part of the bootstrap framework. So let's just mock this out. So you can see here that we've got now got a red outline around here. Perfect. And what we can also do is down here, we can output some help text. And this is in the form of a class called help block. And this could be a span. Makes more sense. So in here, we'll go our error message. So now we have the following. So this is kind of what we want it to look like. So we want to get it to this state. But of course, at the moment, we have everything hard coded. So first of all, the check to actually add this in here. Well, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to do a ternary. And all we do is we say if errors Dot email. So we don't need an if statement because we're doing a ternary. If that's the case and that does have data, we can say has error, otherwise just an empty string. And we've put a space here. That's really important because we've missed out the space just here. So now when we hit submit, that goes red. We just need to output the error now. So in here, of course, this needs to be wrapped in some kind of conditional. So we use a twig if statement and we say if errors.email down here, we end that if statement. So end if we can indent this. And here we want to output the first error message. Now, of course, you could cycle through these, but it's usually only helpful to output the first error message. So we can say errors.email and then we can use the first filter within twig. So all that will do is it will grab the first element of this here. Simple as that, what we can now do is hit sign up and we get our error. We get that outlined in red and this looks good. So now we can do the same thing for these two. And now we have our validation set up. So let's just copy this over here, paste it in this form group for our name. And of course, this is checking errors.name. And of course, we can take this block here as well and paste this down here. So if errors.name, then we want to output the first error from that. 
and we can do exactly the same thing for the password as well down here errors.password and then we can do that block again really straightforward so errors.password errors.password so now when we submit there we go so we've got all of our errors in there so let's just check this out let's say we enter a perfectly valid email address and we enter a wrong name and we enter a normal password so here it says name must contain only letters a to z so we've got rid of the first error but we now have an incorrect name i've also just noticed that we're not validating that this is a valid email so let's just go back and add this in if you haven't already so into our auth controller of course our email must be a valid email so let's check this out ah, and of course my front end validation is getting in the way so just to get by this I'm just going to change this type to text and go ahead and submit the form again there we go email must be a valid email so that is how simple it is to set up our error messages so all we need to do now is remember to check if the validation failed redirect back and our middleware will handle the rest now of course really importantly we need to be able to show old input in the form so if I'm going and I'm entering all of my details and then for some reason I enter one field incorrectly, we see that we lose these two others. We probably don't want to persist the password, but we at least want to persist the email and the name. So we're going to tackle that in the next part once again with some middleware.